This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. We thank Thee, our Heavenly Father, for the privilege of preaching Thy Word. We thank Thee for the unseen thousands, yes, tens of thousands who listen every day. We thank Thee, our Father, for the hundreds who are saved month by month as this program goes out across this great nation. We thank Thee for our Canadian friends, our Mexican friends, and the friends in the islands and around the world. I pray that you'll honor the word today, and may somebody be born again. In Jesus' name, amen. On the last broadcast, I read one of the double verilies, John eight fifty one. Very, very, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Now, of course, Jesus spoke of spiritual death. Certainly it is appointed unto man once to die. It makes no difference, sinner or saint. We are headed toward the graveyard if Jesus tarries. But the wages of sin is everlasting death. Now, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus spoke here of eternal life in the spiritual realm by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Now in verse 52 of this same chapter, Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste death. Now, you see, beloved, Nicodemus, who was the teacher in Israel, Ask Jesus, how can a man be born when he is old? He was thinking in the realm of the natural, the physical. Jesus was speaking of spiritual things. Nicodemus was thinking of carnal things. Now, I do not know whether these Jews were totally ignorant or whether they were just attempting to cause Jesus to do something or say something that would give them a reason for having him arrested. Of course, they were always looking for something through which and by which they could accuse Jesus. But I do believe here they were in spiritual darkness and ignorance, and they meant exactly what they said. Jesus said, keep my saying, my word, my word. You remember he said earlier, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Now, let me point out something here that we need to see. In other words, a person who is born of the Spirit, that person is led by the Spirit. A a person who is born through or by the incorruptible seed, the Word of God, that person possesses divine nature, 2 Peter 1, 4. Therefore, since a Christian possesses the Holy Ghost, since a Christian, not if, but since, a Christian or believer is led by the Holy Ghost, they will continue in the Word because the Word abides within. Now, the Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. It does not say if they walk not after the flesh. The Bible says, love not the world, neither things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of God is not in him. Now, people who love the world, people who follow the world, people who love the flesh, and people who follow the flesh are not born again. Born again believers are led by the Holy Ghost. You see, that's the reason some of you precious people listening to me right now are not saved. You believe that Jesus died for you, and you believe that you could be saved. And you believe that you could live for Jesus, maybe a day or a few hours. But you think about tomorrow, and then tomorrow, and then next week. And you say, preacher, I could be saved, but I could not live the victorious life. Now, may I enlighten you? May I enlighten you? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
He that walketh in the light, or if we walk in the light, as he is in the light. All right, what is the light? The entrance of the word gives light. The word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my pathway. Jesus is light. In the believer abides light, because we are children of the light. First Corinthians, or rather First Thessalonians chapter 5. We are not children of night. We are not children of darkness. We are the children of light. Now, here is the secret of living the Christian life. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Now listen to this. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now listen to me just a moment. If you're one of those precious people who have said, I believe I could be saved, but I could not live it after I was saved. I could not be what I believe a Christian should be. Just hear these precious words. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So, beloved, it is not by living, it is by trusting. It is not by doing, it is by trusting. It is not by abstaining or striving or enduring, it is by trusting. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be victorious. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be led by the Spirit. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be sealed by the Spirit until the day of redemption. My sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. My sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Now, do you hear those words, or do you want to hear them? Listen to this. They have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, that's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Now, you read that, and believe that, and live by it. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil, Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? I said a moment ago, Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he is old? The woman at the well said, you have nothing with which to draw. The well is deep. But Jesus was not speaking of water from Jacob's well. He was speaking of living water, spiritual water, water that brings everlasting life and quenches the thirst of the believer for the things of the world. Now, these Jews were thinking in terms of physical death and physical life. They were not thinking of spiritual life and spiritual death. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Now they said, Moses we know, yes, and God is our Father, but we don't know who you are. Now you remember back here they said, We be not children of fornication. Jesus said, Ye are of your Father the devil. They said, We have one God, even we have one Father, even God. Now that's in verse 41. We have one God, or one Father rather, even God. Then Jesus said, If God were your Father, you love me. Then he said, Ye are of your Father the devil. We spent an entire broadcast on that verse. Now Jesus said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father, my Father that honoreth me of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and I keep his saying. Now let me pause right there just a moment. If you think you have a hard preacher... If you think I am a hard preacher, 
I want to show you something that you need to see and reread and recognize. Have you ever heard your pastor walk in the pulpit and say to people who get drunk and cuss and steal and they partake of the things of the world and they live exactly like the world? They come to church when they get ready. They give a few pennies. They never give systematically. They do not go to church systematically. They live like the world. They act like the world. They walk like the world. Has your pastor ever stepped in the pulpit and said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do? The reason you drink and gamble and cuss and tell dirty jokes and lie and cheat and steal, the reason you do these things, your father is the devil. Have you ever heard your pastor preach like that? Have you ever heard your pastor preach like this? Listen. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom I say that, he, that you say he is your God. Yet ye have not known him. You don't know God. But I know God. And if I should say I know him not, if I, Jesus said, if I should say that I don't know God, I'd be a liar like unto you. Have you ever heard your pastor, have you ever heard Oliver Green come to the radio and call people liars? Have you? Now, let me tell you something. There has never been a preacher that preached in such plain, positive, hard, cutting words as Jesus Christ. Read the 23rd chapter of Matthew. Read Matthew 23 if you want to read some cutting words. He called these people, he said, you're sons of the devil, you're liars. Now, don't ever, don't ever accuse your pastor of being too hard. Don't ever accuse him of preaching too hard. You just read the sermons of Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Now, of course, they couldn't understand that. Jesus is still speaking of spiritual things. They are still thinking of carnal things or the natural. Jesus said, your father Abraham. Now, they recognized Moses. They recognized Abraham. And they said that Jehovah was their God. But Jesus said, you don't know Jehovah. You don't know my father. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. Now, when did Abraham see Jesus' day? Back there when God gave him the promise. You know, Isaac, of course, is a type of Christ, and all down through the life of Abraham. God said, Abraham, get up and get out, leave your country, leave your kinfolks. Read Genesis 12. Read Genesis chapter 12. Abraham obeyed God. He departed. He did exactly what God told him to do. God blessed him. And he was called the friend of God. Read verse 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself, and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Now, tomorrow we'll talk about verse 58. There is entirely too much in that verse today for me to begin talking about it now. But let me show you verse 59. Then I want to go back and talk about these other verses. They took up stones to stone Jesus. Now, in chapter 10, we'll find that they took up stones to stone him. Listen, beloved. There is absolutely no excuse for the people in Jesus' day not knowing that he was God in flesh. In other words, no mortal, no mortal could have done what he did. No mortal could have gotten by without being executed. Stone, you see, they stoned Stephen. They stoned others. Now, Jesus came to down the cross, not, uh, not with stones, no. They tried to push him over the precipice. 
They tried to stone him. They tried to kill him. They tried to take him. They couldn't arrest him. They couldn't stone him. They couldn't push him over the precipice. And yet, they refused to see that he was much, yea, much more than an ordinary man, an ordinary prophet. They refused to see that he was God in flesh. He said, I and my father are one. They took up stones to stone him. He said, before Abraham was, I am. They took up stones to stone him. Now, let me show you something. If they had known their Old Testament scriptures, and if they had been spiritually minded, they said, God is our father. Jehovah is our God. Abraham, we are children of Abraham. But if they had known the God that Abraham knew, had they known the God of Moses, and they always claimed Moses, they they said, we are children of Abraham, and we are keepers of the law. Now, if they had known the God of Moses, had they known the God of Abraham, they would have known when Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. They would have known, I am is none other than Jehovah God. Now, Jesus, in the last part of this gospel, when we reach the final chapters, they came to arrest him, and Jesus said, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I am. Now, in the Greek, there is no personal pronoun. He just said, I am. Two words, he said, I am. And they fell backward to the ground. The words fattened them on the ground. And yet, still, they did not recognize the I am. When Moses said to Jehovah God, You have called me to go down to Pharaoh, and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. You've gone down, you've called me to go down to the people of Israel. Now, when I go down, whom shall I say sent me? And God said, you tell them that I am, I am. Now, the people Israel who knew the law and the people who knew God knew that I am is none other than Jehovah God. I'm a Trinitarian. I believe in Father, Son, Holy Ghost, one God manifest in three persons. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am. God is light. So there he is. Now that's in John eight twelve. I am the light of the world. God is light. Jesus was God in flesh. He said, Thomas, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth, rather. I am the life. The way, the truth, the life. I am. There is God. Jesus was in the beginning with the Father, in the bosom of the Father, and he took a body of flesh. And in that body, he came down to man to declare God. God is a spirit. God is an eternal spirit. And they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. But these dear people could not think beyond the flesh. They said, you're not 50 years old yet. And how could you say before Abraham was, I am? Why, you didn't see Abraham. Abraham is dead. The prophets are dead. And you say, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never die. That's true. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit, they are life. I've just quoted John 5, 24, John 6, uh, 63. Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit, and they are life. When Cornelius was praying, God sent an angel, and the angel told Cornelius, you go to Joppa, and you ask for Simon Peter, and he will give you words whereby you and all your house shall be saved. Now listen carefully. Jesus is the great I Am. I Am is God. Jesus was God in flesh. Jesus was God in flesh, reconciling the world unto himself. Read Second Corinthians 5 19. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And he said to his people, Israel, if you'll hear my sayings, if you'll keep my saying, hear my word, keep my word, you are my disciples 
indeed. Beloved, the only way that any man can become a child of God, the only way that any man can become a disciple of God, is to hear the word, believe the word, receive the word, and Jesus saves. The word of God is the incorruptible seed that brings the new birth. We are saved by grace through faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I beg you today, hear the word, believe the word, receive Jesus, and he'll save you now. Father, honor thy precious, powerful, saving word, the power of God unto salvation to all that believe. Save the soul that's nearest hell. For Jesus' sake we ask it. Bless believers, strengthen the weak, reclaim the backslidden. In Jesus' precious name, amen.